Pete Ahmed of Accenture. Roger is founder of Recon Analytics. The mission of Recon Analytics is to clear the clutter and help executives and policymakers focus on what matters in the marketplace. Roger, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. John Hoadley is CTO for Wireless at Takwa. Takwa is a leading provider of mobile and converged switching gateway, media processing, and batch solutions. Thanks so much for being here today, John. Yeah, glad to be here, Martha. And Shahid Ahmed is the North American Network Practice Lead at Accenture. Accenture is a global management consulting, technology services, and outsourcing firm. Shahid, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Martha. We're going to start off by talking about some of Vulti. I think that, Roger, you are going to start us off by going over some of the spectral efficiencies that can be realized by carriers as they make the move to Vulti. Sure. As we move to Vulti, um, carriers can realize 30, 40 percent more spectral efficiency compared to uh, 3G. And, you know, that, that is a welcome recovery of a valuable spectrum that was lost when we went from 2G to 3G, where we have created uh, a standard that was less voice efficient than. Uh, now, now, can you just with, explain with a little bit about why why um, voice over LTE is actually less voice efficient than 3G? No, vo voice over LTE is more, more efficient, efficient I'm sorry. than. Yeah, well, uh, you are dealing with uh, a lot less uh, overhead and um, and call setup uh, data, and that can be used then uh, for actual data transmission. Uh, when when you're able to uh, cut uh, that signaling uh, activity, and so uh, that helps directly with uh, getting more uh, data transmitted. And as we have, you know, unfortunately, you know, been delayed and delayed with uh, for more spectrum, and now with the uh, the government, we might even have a delay uh, uh, next auction. You know, the, the carriers have to make do with what they have, and uh, Volti is that next step that is under their control. You know, unfortunately, g Congress is out of control, and uh, and we all have to suffer. And and spec availability from Spectrum might be one of the uh, the, the casualties here. Okay, now is all spectrum created equal? Does it matter which spectrum holdings a carrier has when it comes to Volti? John, do you have any comments on that? Well, so let me just back up a bit on the spectral efficiency question. So I agree 100% with Roger that you get a 30 to 40% efficiency gain uh, by going to LTE. I mean, after all, you know, the great thing about LTE is you're using a OFDM MIMO, and with MIMO you've created separate channels. Um, so you're getting kind of uh, uh, this this uh, improvement, effectively kind of creating a new channel, so you're getting more more bits through in a given amount of spectrum, um, just with spatial multiplexing. But the uh, the challenge, though, in terms of it being the justification for Volti, I think it falls down a little when you think of how much spectrum now is devoted to data. So we already are getting that benefit as we went from. 3G to LTE data, so you got a huge amount. And if you look at kind of, you know, Ericsson's got some mobility reports out, and it probably would be generous to say voice is 15% of the, the bits that are going through the, the wireless networks now. So, you know, and that's decreasing. Every quarter, <laughs> the, the amount left over for voice or the amount of actually less and less. Um, or the bits going over over the airways for voice. So, you know, I think carriers will be challenged because you're only getting like a 30% improvement, uh, or you're getting a 30 to 40% improvement, but only for about uh, you know 15% of your of your bits and equivalent amount of spectrum, and that's decreasing over time. So, I think that business case is a little challenging um, just to justify Volti. Uh, certainly, it's been fantastic for uh, uh, you know the whole move towards LTE in terms of the the, you know, the greater data rates and the spectral efficiency improvements. Your other question, Martha, though, was uh, was on the spectrum people get. So not everyone is 
gets the you know is created equal in terms of what spectrum they got for for LTE. Um, if you look at uh, carriers in the U.S. and in Europe, some uh, spent a lot of money and got the 700 megahertz spectrum. Some are spending a lot of money and getting 800 megahertz, the div digital dividend spectrum um, in uh, in Europe and the U.S. And if you get bands like that, I mean, you're going to have spectacular coverage <laughs> in building, and uh, you'll you'll have uh, you'll have excellent uh, ability to deliver Volte through uh, through your entire market. Now, other folks who are having to live at 1800 or 2600 or AWS spectrum, and that's the only bands they have, you know, in, in markets where they don't have a super high density of, of cells, you know, they're going to have challenges, especially at the cell edge with Volpe. So not every carrier is created equal, and everyone has a bit different spectrum position. Okay, Shahid, John is saying that uh, spectral efficiency may not be the most compelling business case for Volte, and I know you talk to a lot of clients about towards Volte, which is always good news. Um, the challenges they're talking about are are deeply ingrained within the operations of managing a, a network that is all IP that can support an application like Volte. Um, and also the associated um, run code. Um, and to that end, The varieties of things going on, and then to make matters more complicated, uh, the whole service um, interoperability, backward compatibility. Obviously, um, when Volte goes online, it's not going to be 100% coverage. in nature, obviously I think the technical part has been by and large solved. Um, it's more the business models, the operational uh, dimensions that are um, you know, keeping people up at night. Um, and, you know, the whole spectral efficiency, by the way, is a very important topic around this because it, it is a key uh, enabler for something like this to make, um, make widely available. So we've already seen the carriers make some significant changes to pricing within the last year. Are you saying that we'll see some more big pricing changes as Volte rolls out? Oh, absolutely. I think um, uh, we will see some step changes around pricing. Um, we're already um, a lot of um, a lot of carriers uh, talk about. Um, uh, uh, bundling of uh, minutes as well as voice together and um, seen some plans coming out of Sprint and uh, T-Mobile. So yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's going to be uh, a disruptive in many ways um, and it will be a step change for sure. Now so far in the U.S. it's really just uh, Metro PCS, I think, that has tried to launch voice over LTE. I know that in South Korea, SK Telecom has more than 3 million voice over LTE subscribers, but here in the U.S. we're just getting started. And so there are very few handsets that support voice over LTE. That is, is starting to change. And, and Roger, I think you were saying before we started that you know about what's coming next as far as handsets. Well, you know, the, uh, the, the problem that held us back with LTE were, were not the handsets. It was the the network. The reason why the, uh, the the logic and and the capabilities in the device didn't show up is because the carriers didn't want to uh, make consumers uh, buy uh, functionality that they couldn't use and, and increase the, the cost. Uh, so with the launch of networks of LTE and and Volte networks. Uh, you know, I think we we have from AT&T and Verizon 
and AT&T uh, announced that by Christmas uh, the first devices are coming here and I think the uh, works will be launched or the quality capabilities will be launched shortly thereafter. Now these handsets will not need two cellular radios they'll just need one right so John do you want to speak about that a little bit and how that may change um, device design, device pricing, device efficiency? Okay, so um, so it's a really good point, Martha. I mean, and it changes the motivation for Volte among different types of carriers. So uh, most of the world, uh, you know, for the state of 3G technology. And with the HSPA LTE devices, they're single radio, um, the majority of them by far. And so, uh, um, so it's a bit different in the CDMA world. CDMA launched with dual radio devices. So you've got a separate radio for um, your EVDO1X and you've got a separate radio for LTE. And that actually adds significantly to the cost structure. Possibly the biggest part of cost structure of a, an operator's network is the handsets. You know, subsidizing them, getting them to the subscribers. So if you can get to a single radio device like the rest of the world has, um, you know, I think that's a significant benefit for the CDMA operators. Along with, as Shahid mentioned, you know, going to an all-IP network, I think really does simplify um, the entire operations of the of the entire network as well, and, and uh, makes the delivery of services a lot easier. But the whole movement away from dual radio um, and, and and the extra cost of putting the radio, the antenna, and all the associated uh, um, costs along with the handset for the CDMA There are between Verizon's rollout and AT&T's rollout. Since Verizon is a CDMA carrier, will it not be harder for them to turn everything on at once compared to maybe AT&T? Well, for, for Verizon, it is a lot more efficient and easier to turn on everything at once um, and have a nationwide uh, a launch, whereas for a GSM carrier, it's a lot easier to turn on market by market and fall back then uh, in some markets and, and be vaulty in, in others. Uh, so from that perspective, um, that's I think why we have not seen anything from Verizon yet because it needs, uh, you know, widespread, you know, and they have basically, uh, you know, reached 300 uh, now covering LTE. Uh, for that to happen. And so uh, it's interesting that they both basically will launch at the same time, even though AT&T is a little bit behind in LTE coverage. So with Verizon, we'll see it all at once. Yeah. likely? Yes, most likely. OK, great, thanks. So let's talk a little bit about the, the all IP network presents for carriers to compete a little bit better with, with over the top. A lot of carriers, not just North American carriers, have that. Yeah, the living in over the last five. For Thor of new application uh, uh, show up on our you know, smartphones, tablets, and that sort of thing. And now um, we're going to see more and more in the M2M uh, IoT space. So no, absolutely, as, as, you, as you build an all IP network, you can A, do a lot more creation and, and product, uh, product development. Um, you have the advantage of almost disaggregating the whole uh, have been used to in terms of delivering services and you can be now part of that overall value chain that the over-the-top guys have been enjoying over the last few years so yeah no it's 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 strategic it's um, 
it's a key technology enabler um, and obviously has all kinds of operational efficiencies that you get with it uh, on the back end side including uh, reducing your cost bases to deliver a type of service to end users. And what are some of the specific types of services that you think we may see? Well, um, um, obviously, um, we you know we can borrow a chapter from Voice of. Right. Uh, so, for example, uh, whether it's uh, unified collaboration, unified communications, is taken to a very different level that we're used to currently on our on our phones. Uh, you know, we're used used to uh, hitting a button on voicemail, and there's separate features associated with voice and data. All of that is now uh, could be bundled into a single package as a as a result of um, IP capability. So, uh, what we've seen in the enterprise side, what we've seen in the voice over IP side, all of those features, functions, services uh, that we're also used to. Now we can see the side um, as um, and and even probably even more because um, the uh, there's just going to be all kinds of new innovation happening as a result of IP on the um, on the network. So for subscribers that are on a GSM network, if those Volti markets are turned on one by one. As they roam, if they leave Volte service, will they then lose access to those apps and those capabilities? Yeah, that's the big uh, challenge. As I mentioned, uh, you know, backward compa compatibility is going to be a challenge. We talked about radios, um, how that's going to be all uh, uh, managed and governed. So yeah, no, um, that is the the uh, one of the big. Um, uh, hindrances, I guess. Um, have to uh, try to do. Is um, you know all of us still use uh, 3G, 4G on our phones, um, plain old voice. So let's talk a little bit about backward compatibility. I know that uh, people will expect their voice service over Volte to be at least as good as what they're currently getting. So when we talk about you know maybe handsets that only uh, are Volte enabled, is that a little bit of a risk? Do you think, John, for a carrier to to um, ask people to make that switch if they're not completely sure about service parity? Well, I think there's a couple things. That one thing, and an excellent thing with uh, with with LTE in general, is that it's uh, built around a very strong structure around QoS. So uh, you know, you've got kind of nine levels, QCI levels they're called, um, and and they typify kind of the types of services and and different kinds of performance requirements in terms of latency, in terms of throughput. Um, that uh, that users you know should be expecting, and uh, basically who've launched LTE have really done a, a very strong job of, of getting the pbits tagged properly at the device at the uh, at the uh, the network level. So. Uh, I think something the carriers, you know, do today, and I think they'll, you know, certainly with the way LTE is structured in terms of QoS, um, and that's what the enterprise top provider. I think that's that's going to be a lot more difficult. In that, uh, you know, if you look at kind of the network features people deliver today, um, you know, a lot of them are based off of IN, whether it's prepaid. You know, there's routing, there's enterprise features, so that's going to be a bit of a, a challenge going forward. The interface to the piece, you know, uh, the regulatory environment, the E911 environment, a lot of piece apps out there that people have to interface with. So, you know, that's something that all carriers, I think, have to re 
wrestle with is that uh, do you want to preserve all those uh, 3G features, IN features that you've developed for the last 10 to 15 years, or is this kind of a IMS full IP system and everything becomes new? So those are some of the things to tech with that we've we've looked at and uh, you know have various uh, approaches to address. So service parity is something that I think every carrier has really got to look at as they go to uh, the voice over LP environment and how quickly they do it. I mean, we all want to get to an all IP environment. All our services are all IP, IMS based. But is there a transition period? Roger, what do you think? Well, I, I think that uh, what is absolutely paramount is that there is no difference in user experience or no degradation in user experience as we move to Vaulty. So, uh, you know, 911 needs to work. Uh, there is no getting around it. Uh, all the existing services that our consumers, that consumers are used to, need to work seamlessly. The only thing that the consumer should actually realize is, oh, this works better. And without it, they will not launch. Um, it, it is just inconceivable that a consumer will uh, come to the carrier old service pack. Uh, the new one simply doesn't cut it. Do you think that will happen, or do you think that nothing will launch in a big way until there's been enough testing to make sure that launching until you know, properly the way it's supposed to work? So AT and T and Verizon have a lot of room by saying it will happen sometime in 2014. What what's your best guess for timing? Sometime in 2014. It, it it really depends on how well they they can uh, can uh, iron out the kinks and make sure that that it works better than um, than 3G. So when AT and T talks about a really going to be dual mode, right? It could also be absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. If they launch it market by and I think the devices need to be dual mode for quite a while. Uh, networks can, uh, you know, that the devices can con can fall back on the networks because when you look at it, you know, I think even the best networks uh, in in the country, uh, when you have an LTE uh, capable device, connects only eighty percent of the time. Uh, with LTE and uh, and uh, with 3G, so um, you know fallback solutions are going to be critical for quite a while. Okay, thank you. Well, before we uh, finish, I'd like to just very quickly um, touch on one other topic. We've talked a lot about, but we haven't really talked about. Um, how Volti can open up new business opportunities for app developers. Now, Shahid, I know that you're going to have to leave us in just a minute here, um, so you can you can say goodbye or, or speak to that, uh, whichever works better for you. Well, um, I, I still have a few more minutes. Um, uh, apologies in advance, uh, but yeah, you know, as far as the business model, that's the most interesting part of, of Volti here, right? Um, really presents an opportunity and yet there's all, all kinds of challenges associated we all know that right from a technical perspective operational perspective and I'm sure between the carriers and the suppliers and the other system um, uh, participants will, will kind of solve that but is going to be um, it's it's uh, we talked about pricing we talked about bundling packaging I think it will enable the carriers to really go head to head against all those over the top players that we've been seeing over the last two three years pop up um, whether it's uh, WhatsApp or or you know uh, variants of Skypes that that are out there and um, a bunch of other applications. Um, and now it will it will present a platform through which they can innovate. 
um, and and provide some very interesting capabilities, feature functions to consumers like us. So that's the that's the most exciting part. The business model obviously is going to be very very disruptive to the extent it will it it will have a major reverse disruptive effect on those over the top internet players that that have been for years been pounding on the carriers uh, uh, in terms of um, you know shaking up their whole um, uh, business model so I'm looking forward to seeing that I bet a lot of carriers are too okay Shaheen Ahmed North American Network Practice Lead for Accenture thanks a lot for being here today thank you very much thank you gentlemen take care Roger, did you have any closing comments before we finish? Yeah, I, th I think the big winner here are going to be consumers because the uh, are going to be uh, reshuffled. It's going to be a whole new ball game. And who knows who? Well, we know who will win. It's the consumer. Uh, if it's the app to it doesn't matter as long as the consumer wins. And here, you know, with Vaulty, where voice becomes a voice, becomes a data application, you know, the, the integration opportunities that exist uh, can only be paralleled with, you know, the, the early dawn of, of uh, apps on, on cell phones. And, uh, you know, it's, it's reshuffling the deck, uh, you know, and, and whoever has the most creative ideas and and the most uh, uh, innovative uh, implementations will win, and and the consumers will flock to it. The consumers are, you know, uh, don't care if it's the carrier that that whose application they use or, or the consumers uh, or, or an app developers, as long as it's the best. Okay, and John, do you have any final comments on uh, new business models and applications? I think there's, you know, lots of great possibilities. Um, you know, you're going into an all IP world, so I think the carrier really, um, uh, from the, the the perspective of being able to, uh, um, you know, in their back office, provide some great integrated opportunities uh, in terms of data and voice together. Some conference features, especially some high quality things for enterprises, I think are excellent. I do, though, uh, just want to state it. It's a tough technology to get working. I mean, uh, you know, people have announced it a lot. I mean, I was in a conference last week in London. Um, SKT has, you know, five million handsets that are enabled, but the actual amount of calling that going over, we couldn't get actually a number out of folks. It seems like there's still a lot of things to work in terms of the quality, getting the coverage right, getting the transition technologies, um, the voice call continuity, SRVCC. So you're doing handoff. Uh, when you should, that you're actually enabling multi calls in cells that don't have marginal coverage but have excellent coverage. So creating the proper, uh, you know, list of which cell sites multi calls should go in and which cell sites 3G calls should go in. So there's still a lot of things to do to get to the multi world, um, and these transition technologies I think are very important to ex to to have and to, to execute uh, very well. So we're not taking a step backwards. What's what's your best guess for what we'll see in 2014 as far as as when uh, the big two carriers really push Volte in a big way? Uh, I'm not sure about the big two carriers. I'm sure kind of uh, around the world, you know, it's a technology people have to, uh, you know, if they've launched LTE, they've got to move towards uh, Volte, and they've got to do it in the proper steps. I think the actual urgency is greater for the. C than it is for the HSPA carriers. I think we're going to see a lot of people trialing. Um, I think we're, you know, the, the actual amount of Volte calling, I think, is going to, in terms of large numbers of people actually, you know, engaged in Volte, isn't going to happen to till later than 2014. I think uh, there's a difference between um, actually having a network up and running and trialing and getting it right as opposed to actually getting it right and, and having large numbers of consumers. So I think that's going to take take a few years before we get mass uh, Volte calling going on. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, John Hoadley, CTO for Wireless at Takwa. Thanks a lot for joining us here today. Thanks, Martha.
This has been RCR Wireless News 2014 Volte Predictions. Thank you all for joining us.